Let's go over some more advanced concepts with transitions. For a transition to work, you have to have a head and tail on the end and the beginning of the outgoing and incoming clip. This is footage that is not being used so that the transition can actually use that to build the transition, to build that fade from one clip into another one. If you don't have that extra footage, then the transition can't be built. However, LumaFusion has a way around that, but you might wanna turn that off. Kinda of depends on your style of editing. Let's have a look. With these two shots on the timeline, you can see that the first shot, the outgoing clip, has plenty of tail on there. That's the footage that's not being used. And the incoming clip has plenty of head. That makes it easy to add a transition. When I add the transition between them, nothing changes. We simply have that transition between the two shots. But what happens if I don't have heads or tails to transition into? Let me take this clip and extend it all the way to the end. So this clip can't get any longer. That's all of it. We'll go ahead and leave the head on this one but we've taken the tail off of this shot here. If I go to add a transition, it shouldn't work, but it does. So what's actually happened? Well, LumaFusion has actually trimmed the duration of that outgoing clip so that it was a little bit shorter, giving us room for that cross dissolve. In many editing styles, that could be totally fine, but there may be times when you don't want it to do that, when you wanna have complete control over what happens on the timeline. Let me show you what's actually happening by looking at the duration of the shot before and after I add the transition. I'll delete that and let's once again make sure we're at the end of that clip there. And if I look at the total duration of this project, you'll see that it's 12 seconds and three frames long. Just to make this easy, let me trim this down by three frames. I'll zoom in by triple tapping to look at this at the frame level. And then I'll drag this back by one, two, three frames. Now we can see we're at exactly 12 seconds long. All right, let's go back to the transition between these two shots, add that cross dissolve and suddenly the shot is only 11 seconds and 15 frames. It has trimmed half a second off of the clip to make for that one second cross dissolve. It did that by simply shortening that outgoing clip. But if I don't want it to do that, I can control that. I'm gonna undo this. And so once again, we're back where we started with this shot not having any tail. And now I'm gonna to go to the gear menu to open the settings, jump into preferences. And then down here under advanced settings, I can toggle off ripple main track for transition insert. What this means is that the track will not ripple to create that transition. Let's go back over here and try to add the transition now. And what we get is an error telling me that it can't. There's not enough media. So if I want to be able to do that, I'll have to turn that back on or manually trim the shot. Having that option gives you more control over your timeline. And if you're an advanced editor, I would recommend that you probably want to turn that off. It's on by default. So just jump into the settings there and toggle that line off if you don't want your timeline ever to move without you intending it to. Next, let's talk about audio. Whenever you add a transition between two clips, LumaFusion is not just transitioning the video, it's also transitioning the audio. It could be a simple crossfade from one clip to the next, but that audio transition is in there. But what if you don't want it to? What if you would rather it doesn't transition the audio, but it does the video? Or maybe you want it to transition the audio, but not the video. We can do all of that too. These two shots have audio on them. Let's listen. It's a different scene. We have an outdoor, early morning, quiet scene, and then transitioning to this busy market where someone's cooking. So two very different audio sounds. If I add a cross dissolve between these two, the audio is going to get transitioned along with the video, and it sounds great. But what if I don't want it to do that? Let's delete that audio transition. Maybe I wanna have the video transition, but not the audio. The easiest way to do that is to detach the audio from each video clip. By triple tapping on the clip, it detaches the audio. And now, if I add a transition to the video clips, we'll have a transition in the video, but not in the audio. We can reverse that and go the other way. Let me undo this and go back to where those two clips were still attached. And instead of using the default cross dissolve, I'm gonna use this one here called Video Cut Audio Cross. What this does is it adds a transition just to the audio tracks, but not to the video. So now the video will cut, but the audio transitions. I actually use this transition a lot, but I usually use it much shorter. In fact, I hardly use transitions at all in my editing, except for this one. And whenever I use it, I want it to be really short, maybe four, or just six frames. So instead of having to add the transition and change its duration every time, I wanna change the default duration of the transitions that I add. To do that, I'll go into the preferences. Back in the gear menu, on the first tab, settings, you'll see that there is a transition duration slider. I can make it up to 10 seconds long, or all the way down to just four frames. Let's make it a little bit longer, six frames. 
Now, when I add a transition, let's go ahead and delete this one. That transition is only gonna be six frames long. So now we're gonna have a straight cut in the video, but a nice clean transition in the audio. It's very short, but it does make a difference. Having that tiny cross dissolve in just the audio can make those shots blend together much more seamlessly.